From horror attractions to home invasions, this game really has it all. Is that what we're partaking in this time? I guess the title screen is a dead giveaway. So what's the story arc here? Home alone meets the banana splits? I thought everything was said and done. Why do these mutant Barbie dolls insist on harassing us? You should know as a businessman that if something works, keep doing it. Yeah, but not at my expense. Well, as you can see, our game will mainly take place at the location you see on the screen. Donald, why don't you start us off this game? The world's best security guard, the very best, will pioneer the way once again. You do know the captain goes down with his ship, right? Uh, with Don at the helm, we'll sink while we're still docked. And here we go. Are we in an arcade machine? Five days until the party. What in Disney merchandise? Yeah, Hallmark got a hold of Golden Freddy. What did he do this time? What did he do to you? He turned you into a damn marketable plushie. He locked you in your room again. Don't be scared, I am here with you. Take note on what you're about to see. Oh, did Harry Potter's closet get the Barbie treatment? These are my friends. The hell has he been doing to Foxy? Puberty must be coming in hot. Uh, again, this is a small child, Don. Ah, the expert is here to correct me again. Are we banging on the door? It did say that we got locked in. Ugh, I'm not the biggest fan of those eyes. They're almost soulless. They're clearly not soulless enough if the yellow condom is following our every move. And he's crying. This kid is a moron. I'd stuff you under the stairs, too, if you cried at the drop of a hat. Tomorrow is another day. I can just tell he'll be a liberal growing up. Parents are not teaching him right. There's a lot I can say about what you just said. Night one. Different screen for the nights now, huh? The quality goes up as the games go up. Typical fashion in that sense. Oh, what? Wait, am I that damn eraser-eating brat? And are we in a bedroom of all places? As I've said, the main stage for this game will take place at this house. You have three doors to check, two on your sides, and one right in front of you. You also have to turn around and flash your light on your bed. We're really teaching this kid the early life of little nightmares here. I will say the mechanics here are a tad bit complex. It's, instead of me explaining it, the game goes out of its way to elaborate the overall tasks that you need to tend to. Does this kid sleep with his grandma? Why does his bed suck? Nitpicking the little things here, aren't you? So basically shine the light if someone isn't there, close it if someone is. Right, except for the middle door, which is the closet. Someone will be there no matter what at some point, so when they show up, you have to keep the door closed for a period of time to reset them. Then why the hell do we have to look at the bed? The bed is where certain scraps will gather to form an entity. You have to look at your bed for some time to make those scraps scatter. All we need now is a raging alcoholic dad and we're a fit for a night in the trailer park. The same trailer park where you and Putin discussed international secrets together? No, that was in Moscow. But he told me that was the place where you gave him uranium. Before you involved me, that was mainly the Clintons doing. Well, Bill has always been on the slow side. I think Monica chewed on one of his nuts like a squirrel and it rewired his brain or something. That's not how that works. We can let Bill be the judge of that. Something interesting to note is the lack of detail in this game. What do you mean by that? Well, in the first three games, the stage was pretty set. We knew we were a security guard looking for work. We knew what type of work we would be doing. We knew the overall time period, and we even got nightly phone calls to guide us throughout the week. Um, this is more of a blank canvas, it seems. They really lobbed a jigsaw puzzle at us and said, get to work. The flow in this game is a lot more freeform. With the first three games in the franchise, you mainly had a sense of direction and the overall goal during your stay. However, that disappears here. The main premise of surviving to 6 a.m. is still there, but there's no other emphasis. It leaves you in the dark. The feature difference is huge, too. I think this is the first time you actually can physically move around the area, and that adds another level of depth to the playing field. That and we have no cameras. Hell, why are we this little abortion failure anyways? Most of these games act as a typical extension to the story, so there's a good reason why we're looking through the eyes of a child. Are we perhaps one of the kids that was butchered by the purple guy? Well, you know I'm not one for spoilers, so I'll just bite my tongue. But you are right. There is a reason for the perspective shift. Well, all I know is that I'll breeze through this game, no sweat, nothing ever happens during night one anyways. Ah! You really love putting your own foot in your mouth. What the hell was that? That was Bonnie. Why did he have 37 rows of teeth like the big bad wolf? Because he, he's looking for us three little piggies to devour. Come on, Barack, you know Donald's not so little. If you donkeys are done hee-hawing, I'd like to see Obama embarrass himself. 
You set a pretty high record, Don. I don't know if I can top that. This isn't the Olympics, you two. Stop trying to set records of mental illness and just play the game. You would know a thing or two about that. Excuse me? Nothing. I think I already know my answer, but how important is sound in this game? Oh, extremely. Sound is the most important element of all in this game. You not only need to know where everybody is in relation to you, but you also need to know how close they are to you. I really appreciate you explaining this on my turn, Joe. It really means a lot. Is it like the footstep mechanic from the first game? Essentially. Each game has sound elements that assist you throughout the weeks, but this one by far is the most important. In other games, you didn't have to use the environmental noise to survive. In this game, you must. And why is that? Well, notice how... What was that, Joe? Notice how the instructions refer to listening. If you hear breathing at your door, you're supposed to close it. If not, you're supposed to flash your light. Knowing when to do which is entirely dependent on audio. And that's for the... Oh, come on. And that's for the middle closet, too? I don't believe you have to worry about that just yet because it's not utilized until the second night, but you'll hear footsteps actually running towards the closet. Once that happens, you need to keep it closed until the animatronic has been settled. That's very vague considering... Is there a forest fire or something? What the hell is happening? It's not like the office is in a bad neighborhood or anything. We are pretty close to a police station from what I remember. Oh, guess what? What's happening? Someone hit a pothole in the road and crashed into a ditch. I signed off on a package to invest in roadside construction about a month or so ago. And what a good use it's turning out to be. Now I have to see a decapitated 40-year-old sprawled out on the road when I'm leaving this place. They got decapitated? I hope so. Either that or that road was looking mighty comfy. Was there any blood? No, so he probably still has his brain screwed on, but here's to hope. You're an actual psychopath dressed like a swine. Calling Donald a psychopath is an insult to the very word. What the hell? Did Freddy get hit with a shrinking ray? What was that? That's one of the scraps that I was referring to. They're called frettles, or mini Freddies. If so many gather on your bed, the entire version of Freddy will form and kill you. Will he also look like Bonnie from the Trap House? Yes, every animatronic looks like that. They're called nightmare animatronics due to their intensified looks. Of all things for you to say, I didn't expect Bonnie in the Trap House. And I, I just caught Chica trying to do the plug walk towards us. It's like Jason Voorhees blew up a porta potty with a Chica toy in it and made that. Again, they're called nightmare animatronics for a reason. Come to think of it, there better be a damn good reason why we have Chucky's lucid nightmare coming to haunt us at 4 a.m. This kid's parents must have the best sleep on earth to not wake up to any of this. No kidding. The entire Grammy Awards is happening in the living room. And both parents are knocked out like they swigged a bottle of Dayquil. They must be good parents if the kid is trained to fight like this. Probably went back and forth to see which parent was taking off the belt. That's a little too far, Don. This might be the question to end all questions. What bedroom has two doors that lead to different hallways? Did Peter Griffin himself build this house? And we made it through a difference in the clock, too, like an actual alarm clock. How the hell did that work? Did the circus really end? And everyone said, damn, we'll get him next time. That must have been an awkward walk to the door. While the sound wasn't the most necessary utility this night, it'll be a major factor from here on out. So with that being said, we'll have to be quiet to let Barack focus. You want Donald to be quiet? You want me to be quiet? Yeah, how hard can it be? Impossible. Impossible. Where's Obama at? Oh, hey, Donald. Barack said he would be a bit late today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey. What's up? Last week, um, early last uh, week, you talked a great deal about death. Yeah, what about it? Was everything you said true? Well, I really don't know how to answer that. Why is that? Well, who doesn't think about death? You do, Barack does, my wife does, all the American people do. It's not a unique concept that's exclusive only to me. That's a given. I've pondered life, all of life, by the way. But do you really think of it in a half glass, empty sort of way? I hate to say it, but it's almost completely empty for me. Yeah, same here. Maybe that's just the old man talking, but even on sunny days, the clouds seem to get darker. Yeah, no, I get what you're saying. It's, um, yeah, I get it. It's easier for you to understand. Barack has quite the time left before he has to consider any of that. Right, well, truthfully speaking, very truthfully, see, I didn't know that it bothered you, really. So, I guess I'm sorry. Hey, sorry for being late. Michelle needed help with something. What did I miss? Nothing. 
Nothing at all? Yeah, it's nothing, Barack. Let's just get to the game. Four days until the party. Are we back playing as little orphan Annie? Why am I not surprised? You know he is hiding again. Are Ronald McDonald and Grimace playing seven minutes in heaven or something? What, what are you even talking about? Just smile and wave, Joe. Smile and wave. Well, some clown is laughing, and Joe's right here. He won't stop until you find him. Donald, you have on as much makeup as a stripper on Broadway. Or a hooker in Manhattan. Or, or a part-timer for both. Both sounds about right. Is that the mangle? It might just be a broken ceiling fan. So the mangle. Whatever it is, we're supposed to go over there. Whatever that means. Can we talk about why Yogi Bear's piss cousin is in every room of this house? The owners must be a big fan of the restaurant. This is like Disney super fan level of creepy. Did you really expect anything else from this chain? Somewhat. Oh. Who is that and why are you crying again? That clearly scared him. Tomorrow is another day. Can we return this kid to the nursery? It must be defective or something. Fun with plush trap? Hold control to use flashlight. Use flashlight to stop plush trap on the X to skip two hours on the next night? That means you have to be quiet to let Barack hear the footsteps, Don. I can do that. Then shut up. These footsteps are easier to hear. Smaller environment, too. It's still soft. Those crickets are louder than anything. Can I talk now? No, I flashed too early because of you. What a load of crap. How is he not moving? His footsteps are very distinct. Well, there he moved. Yeah, I didn't notice, Don. Got him. Nice, Barack. Good job. That shaved off two hours of the next night. So can we choose when to skip it? Like, if we get to 4 a.m., can we skip to 6? No, you can't choose. As you can see by the time, it applies to the beginning of the night. I'll take it either way. That's two less hours that I have to play through. As a reminder, Donald, we'll mainly want to stay quiet so Barack can focus. Are you serious? That's so boring. Very boring. It's OK, Joe. I'll just turn the volume all the way up. Uh, suit yourself, I suppose. Um, we could always just hand Donald some duct tape like given to the homeless. Is that what we do with our tax dollars, too? Just give them out to random people begging? Yeah, because our foreign assistance equates to random nobodies. Everybody first but the USA. That's your guy's motto. Probably why we've shoveled out billions to Ukraine and Taiwan to fight their battles for them. Don't start that. It was necessary for Ukraine to receive humanitarian, financial, and military support. And by doing so, you made enemies with longtime friend Russia. Don, you know what would happen if Putin won in Ukraine. We would be going down the rabbit hole with another world war, this time in nuclear fashion. Joe, that's happening regardless. Do you not see China's interest in Taiwan? They have not forgotten what happened at the end of World War II. I think we're all very well aware of that, but the reason why assisting Ukraine is necessary is to discourage China from doing the same to Taiwan. While Ukraine and Russia are primarily the only forces fighting, all of NATO is aiding relief to Ukraine. You don't think the dictator of China is aware of that? Uh, I think he's very aware, but it's not affecting him the way you think it is. You have to understand that communist dictators do not care about the citizens they oversee. They care about the dynasty that they shape. Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini were like that. Gotcha. Kim, Putin, and Xi are like that, too. Do you really think any of these men will back down from their sacred honor just because the whole world is against them? I have no idea what you guys are talking about, but I'll assume Donald's losing an argument. At least I can speak up to my wife. Good thing he couldn't hear that. I also could have been lying about not being able to hear, but who knows? I don't take back. Wait a minute. I'm starting to get familiar with the audio in this game, but there seems to be a new sound now. What do you mean? I can't put my finger on it exactly, but it sounds like someone or, or something is running back and forth. Well, you should know that there is a reason for those new footsteps. Hmm. I doubt they're from Bonnie or Chica. I already think I know what they sound like. Their footsteps sound like they're walking in steel toe boots. What did I say about being quiet? You guys are literally talking. How is it any different when I talk? Because you put Fred Flintstone out of a job when it comes to screaming. Well, yabba dabba do. I hope you swallow a razor blade and die. Exhibit A. How? I wasn't even that loud. Now you guys are just crying liberal tears. You say as you scream your head off like a banshee. Maybe if I wasn't getting accused here like I was. Shut the hell up, Don. I think I just heard footsteps close to me. Nope. Looks like you're good for now. Wow. You're telling me Obama was wrong. Color me pink. I didn't think I would see the day.
You might actually complain more than my wife. It's impressive. Uh, might want to check on that. Okay. Hey! Close the door. Keep it closed until he's a plushie. Foxy hiding in the closet, staring at a child. What does that say about liberal agendas? Why is he just a hook now? That's the phase that he's in. The closer he is to an animatronic, the closer he is to attacking you. And when he's a plushie, he's not close at all, right? Right. He'll never fully leave the closet, but you can keep him as a plushie. Uh, that's breathing. Bonnie got here pretty quick. I still can't get over that Foxy business. Somebody call Chris Hansen. Don, be serious for a second. It's 5 a.m. and I'm really trying to get out of here alive. I don't know if I said this before, but you're doing a fine job right now, Barack. Keep it up and this game will turn out like FNAF 2. Slurp him off harder, Joe. He's just going back and forth to two separate doors. No need to praise him like Prince. Bonnie used you like floss. I don't want to hear it. I was thinking more like a toilet brush. Man, speaking of Bonnie, he's back here humping my door. Just what I needed to see in my head. Bonnie in a jock strap, getting jiggy with the wall art. What? Pretty sure that's just you, man. And, and saved by the bell. Good job, Barack. I wish this was the alarm to my actual life, because I cannot imagine a universe where that needed to be said, Donald. Don't blame me. You were the one talking about humping. Three days until the party. Counting down to doomsday, everybody. You're not wrong. Does this kid do anything else but cry? He left without you. He knows that you hate it here. You are right beside the exit. If you run, you can make it. This kid has the balls of a chipmunk. He's not going anywhere. Hurry, run toward the exit. Better get running then. That's not good. This kid kind of earned his death. It's too late. Hurry the other way and find someone who will help. You know what will happen if he catches you. Who is that? Purple guy got put in the hayhock already. I thought we were over with this. You can find help if you can get past them. You have to be strong. Like that'll ever happen. And you're right because he's crying again. Seriously? You can't even run without crying? Tomorrow is another day. I really hope not. Is this one of the kids that gets stuffed in the suits? I'm starting to regret getting the good ending in FNAF 3. So you're wishing death upon a kid all because he was crying? What? No! Maybe. Top of the morning to you laddies. You're not Irish. My name is Joe Biden, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's 4, the game where some young whippersnapper drags some old geezers through a nightmare. You're not too off from that statement, Joe. So business as usual, or is there something we should be aware of? Only the obvious aggressiveness. You should know how the nights get harder as the nights progress. Well, we're getting right to work. I think it would be best if we try to keep Foxy out of the closet for as long as possible. Is that an innuendo? How would that be an innuendo? Because, you know, closets and furries? What? Never mind. We should let Barack focus, Donald. He has to start paying attention during these nights. Well, if he's going to focus, let me ask you something, Joe. Sure, what's on your mind? How much do you keep up with Twitter? Oh, was that Foxy? Yeah, he goes back and forth from each side. That's why checking both doors rapidly will help you a lot. That's good to note. Sorry, Don, what did you say? I asked if you pay attention to Twitter at all. Not very much. I have my media team cover all of my external and online advertising. So I spend very little time on social websites. So you haven't seen the absolute clown fest of this guy, Adam? Adam? Yeah, Adam, 20-something. His name isn't important. It's what he allows in his life, which is a problem. And that is? Well, not only did he marry a woman of little value, but she's being passed around like snack food for every guy in Los Angeles to get a hold of. I mean, to each their own, I guess. To each their own? Joe, his wife is being stuffed like a cream stick. It's like watching Twinkies expand from the outside. No need to get graphic. I'm not saying I, Foxy just went in the closet, Barack. I know, I just want to check over here first. You were saying, Joe? I'm not saying I promote it or even think it's socially acceptable, but the American culture and civilization has built a fundamental structure allowing freedom and individual perusal in choices and consequences. And you don't think it's sad that he's become another Sneeko? Who's Sneeko? Some cuck. I mean, he was a pleasant man to talk to, very pleasant. And his political ideologies align with bringing the truth to the people. An upstanding guy. Well, then, how is he a cuck? He watched his girlfriend get run through like a track meet. Oh, Don. Sorry, sorry, a marathon. Just to throw in a much needed change of topic, I feel a lot more rushed this night. Everything is based off timing now and that window you have to react is going to get smaller and smaller. That was only natural to assume. For now, I'll just keep pressing forward. Well, while he's doing that, Donald, do you have any other weird questions? Well, besides putting a cork in my mouth after I left the White House, well, nothing comes to mind. What does that mean? 
I'll explain it in a brief synopsis. Got it. So after you steal the election from me. I don't recall that. You march into the Oval Office with a diaper wedgie. I also don't remember that. And you slather your wrinkly old titties on all the progress I made during my term. Man, you are three for three at guessing my first day in the White House. Then why the hell did you reverse every single policy I enacted? I didn't just blindly reverse them for the fun of it. Those decisions had weight to them. They had purpose. Like what? Well, for example, rejoining the Iran nuclear... <laughs> that just scared the hell out of me, Barack. Don't you already know what happens in the game? I feel like you should have expected that. There's still things that can catch a man off guard, Don. My bad, Joe. Kind of forgot he does that when you flash him. What were we even talking about? I'll be honest, I completely forgot. Joe, I really try not to make fun of your age, but you're not doing yourself any favors. I mean, you can't go half past 30 seconds without the amnesia knocking you down. Don, I really try not to make fun of your intelligence, but you're not doing yourself any favors by being a damn moron. Okay, that's a little uncalled for. You forgot too. What are you talking about? What are you guys screaming about? I'm trying to play the damn game here. Nothing, Barack. It's nothing. Sorry for getting so loud. All right, tell Don to shut the hell up for me. I wasn't even the one screaming. Hey, Don, Barack tells you to... I heard him, Joe, loud and clear. Yeah, that's what I thought, Bonnie. Good job, Barack. You're moving as smooth as a hot knife through butter. Thanks, Joe. It's, it's still really challenging trying to manage everything, but I now know what to listen for. Oh, so now you can talk, huh? Well, yeah. It's easier to engage with you guys as long as some diaper-wearing shit stain of a baby isn't screaming in my ear. Psst. What? He's talking about you. Don, will you cut it out? Oh, did you hear that, Obama? The wind is getting awfully rambunctious. Well, tell the wind to pipe down because it's 4 a.m. and I'm not trying to plow a fistful of keys down its mouth. The wind says that you're too much of a blue-coated panhandler for that. Look, just try to be more quiet. No promises. Oh, yeah, we were talking about policies earlier, Don. Oh, right. And how you pissed your chakra all over my progress to make this Chidori stained hellhole. Like I said, it was in the best interest for the American people to reverse those policies. With the Iran nuclear deal, I believe it provides a framework for addressing Iran's nuclear ambitions and ensuring the security of the region. Well, Joe, I have to say your answer doesn't surprise me. I think you just smeared your ball sweat all over your forehead with that one. Don, your teeth are very lucky that these headphones are loud enough to drown you out. What the hell does that mean? What about my ball sweat? Joe, it's the same old rhetoric we've come to expect from you. The Iran deal was a complete disaster. It gave them access to billions of dollars without addressing their support for terrorism. You mean the fight against terrorism? You know, with Iran, it's really hard to tell which side they're on. It's like being bisexual about violence. You mean bipolar? Honestly, whatever fits the shoe, all I know is that you done got skid marks on the mattress one too many times. I think you mean poop marks. Will you stop correcting me? It's getting annoying. Ah! Don! What? Your fat ass mouth just got us killed because you can never shut the hell up. Don't look at me. Joe started it. No, the hell I did not. Well, what now? Which one of you old folks is going to pick up the pace for us? I suppose it'll be me, considering I haven't gone yet. We'll have to be as quiet as mice for this one, Obama. Looks like your ratting experience will come in handy then. I do have the headset turned up as loud as it can go, so you guys should be able to talk as loud as you want. Still, I'll let you know if you're getting a bit loud. That thing probably sounds as loud as a rock concert or something. Regardless, he's right about how loud it can get, especially with friends like you. Are you seriously still upset about losing? It happened like two minutes ago. We're past that now. It was 5 a.m. I was right at the tip of Mount Everest, and you just pushed me down to the Grand Canyon. Aren't you exaggerating a bit here? It's not like I embarrassed you at an international conference. We're playing as this, this whiny liberal child. That doesn't matter. This is not the first time that your inability to control your volume has led me into destruction. I disagree. I think the context of the situation entirely matters. Like I said, it would be different if there were a bunch of showboats and world leaders in attendance. That's not happening here. We're playing a damn kid's game. You keep prodding on about what about ism. It's annoying. Just address what I'm saying. Your volume has rimmed me. Listen, loudness or no loudness, you have to admit that you're getting way too upset at something this trivial. Donald, did you or did you not scream at a crying child last time? Because in your words, he was being a crybaby. Yeah, that's not trivial. You're telling me you weren't upset with this pile of turds? No, because it's a damn pixelated child. He, he's not real. I know he's not real, and that's why it pisses me off that much more. Like the guy making this game couldn't have given him more of a spine or something? It's amazing how I can feel my brain cells just explode inside of me. 
I'm going to need life support at this rate. Listen here, drama queen. All I'm saying is that you're overreacting to your loss. Like, think about it. We are currently playing a game where we are the size of a packing peanut. It is not that serious. Go back to the living room, Bonnie. Are you guys saying anything? See, Joe, the old geezer still can... All right, good. I was just double-checking. Did he just cut me off? Yep, nobody talking whatsoever. Complete silence. Oh, he must be saying, I, I want an early funeral um, in a different language or something. Donald, if, if it wasn't that serious, is that why you wanted me to put out a poll asking who would win in a fight, you or the crying child? No, that was to prove my point. And what point was that? That this child has absolutely no spine to him whatsoever. He's a loser. If me and him were to get into a fight, I'm knocking him down like fight night. Well, yeah, he's a damn child. Yeah, but even as a child, there should be the indomitable fighting spirit that dwells within you. It's primal human instinct to get up and fight for what you love. This kid must have been born too early because he's all messed up. Well, he's also fighting off these monster infusions of toy robots. I feel like he's doing enough there. Do you think that you could do what he's doing right now? I wouldn't have to. The sheer intimidation that would ooze off my body would send shivers down the endoskeletons of these clunky cuckoo clocks. I think that's just your sweat. It may be that too. Yeah, why the hell am I sweating, actually? Didn't the repairman come fix the AC? That's what I thought, but now that you mention it, um, it is a bit stuffy in here. If you guys are talking about the AC, the repairman didn't come today. Something about uh, the rim to his truck got messed up going over a pothole. Hey, Don, do you remember what vehicle crashed outside yesterday when it hit a pothole? Don? It was an HVAC vehicle. Right. I'll tell Joe that he really needs to start pushing initiative for nationwide repairs. Oh! Damn it, Joe, you did the exact same thing Obama did. Sorry if that scared any of you guys. It was an honest misclick. Why do I find that hard to believe when you got a grin as wide as the Ohio River on your face? Sorry, I was just thinking of something. I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda of scared to see what that looks like. And I think you just caught Chica trying to peep on you or something. Yeah, cause she really wants to take a look at Alligator Skin Joe over here. Have you ever seen what a bag of skin looks like? Well, look no further. I just heard him breathing again. They're coming in hot right now. I really need to focus if we're gonna be able to hold off. It sucks that you have to keep checking Foxy. You are right. It's really best to try to keep him out in the halls for as long as possible. An easy task, if I do say so myself. Honestly, Joe, I don't understand how you weren't able to do that. Ah! Damn it. What the hell was that? Was that a cupcake? Right. Well, instead of Chica coming into the room to scare you, she sends her cupcake in. That's actually kind of cool. You know what's not cool? We lost again. That means the self-proclaimed world's best security guard is player one now. Fine by me. I'll whip this crying child into shape. You might want to start with yourself first. Hello, everybody. My name is Donald Trump, and welcome back to FNAF 4. The game where we get to witness Donald succumb to the nightmares of his past. Well, to one of the animatronics, Donald is the monster. Joe, if that's another damn Chica joke, I'm filling your inhaler with pesticides. It's also the game where Donald admits to federal crime. It's your turn at the steering wheel, Donald. Since you haven't played since night one, I highly recommend that you listen to the game carefully. If I was really this damn kid, I would just keep all the doors closed and sit on my bed. Too bad we play as someone who eats sharpened pencils during recess. Crayons just go flying from his nose when he sneezes. Uh, anyways, just stick to playing. The game picks up fast. I'm noticing for myself. Well, he'll be in his own little world. In the meantime, can I ask something about these animatronics? Go ahead and shoot. And in the mini games, the child claims that the stuffed animals are his friends. Bonnie the Atlanta stripper is being as aggressive as ever, I see. However, clearly these things are haunting him in the middle of the night. So which is it? I'm hearing this walking that keeps going back and forth. What the hell is that? That's Foxy. I thought I said this before, but he goes back and forth from door to door trying to get into your closet. Ironic if you think about it. No wonder he yells if the closet gets opened. Barack, remember that during one of these mini games, the crying child was told that he knows you hate it here. So it's assumed that even though the stuffed animals are his friends, there's still some association with insidious entities. All right, so far so good. Remember, the difficulty picks up as the night goes on. There it is. So that's what the breathing sounds like. Right. I guess since you've always been talking to me or Barack, you never properly heard it. 
I suppose I'm just confused how the hell these things relate to the overall story. Like, where did they even come from? Are these machines made by Fredbear and company? How did they even get in the house? These are all questions that will be revealed to you later in the game. Uh, it, it's something I could inform you about, but I just think that would take away from the game experience. Sometimes it's almost impossible to tell if someone is there. I have to really listen. Interesting. One thing I'm noticing is that these are the classic animatronics that are attacking us. Is this after the first game? Again, refer to the first thing I said. Well, what can you tell me? That depends on what you ask. Donald was right. You're like one of those weird cryptic merchants in RuneScape. The funny thing is, Donald doesn't say it as kindly as you do. Well, let me just say this. I don't think we're in the same home as we are in the mini games. Really? Why do you think that? A couple of reasons. For one, uh, the stuffed animals that are typically in the corner are not there. That you are correct. Shut up for a second. Wait, what the hell? That wasn't Chica. Was that Foxy? Yeah, that was Foxy. Creeping in the hallways of a little boy. Typical liberal behavior, if you ask me. Second, Fredbear isn't on the bed. It's a normal Freddy. And the bed's not faced parallel to the door. Uh, lastly, and I think most importantly, there's only one door. Damn it, Foxy. You left-wing predator. Donald, stop associating the Democratic Party with predatorial behavior. <laughs> Did you really do that on purpose? I have no idea what you're talking about. And I have to leave Foxy like that so Freddy doesn't strip on the bed for us. I will say this. You are doing a good job managing for your second time playing. Did you really doubt the world's best security guard? The very best? Not necessarily. Well, I did. Well, enough talk. Uh, let me focus. Anyways, you have good eyes, Barack. You are correct. We are in the same bedroom. And I presume you won't allude to if we even play as the same kid or not? Again, as we move through the game, all of these questions will be answered. And I don't mean one at a time. It'll all be immediate. Interesting. I wonder how it'll all piece together. And again, Bonnie is thrusting his furry crotch on my doorknob. Just think of that. All of that rabbit fur stuck in the key lock. What are you even talking about? We're going to need some disinfectant wipe for the door. Who knows what diseases he's caught at the club? Bonnie getting ones thrown at him is certainly an image to ponder about. I don't even think deviant art could whip up a concept like that. Oh, fuck. I forgot about deviant art. Dare I ask what this game looks like over there? I, I don't know specifically. But uh, since you've looked up the first game, I think you have a general idea of what the war front looks like. Maybe the stripper comment wasn't exactly wrong, huh? I, I didn't say I wanted it to be accurate. I mean, they're coming to my door so much they're painting a new layer of white on it. Don, that's disgusting. Probably honest, but still disgusting. Just maintain your focus right now. It's 4 a.m., which means you're almost somewhere over the rainbow. It would be a lot easier without Closet Herbert over here trying to snatch me up and take me to his basement or something. Oh, that's a good question to ask. Like, why does Foxy hide in the closet instead of just killing us directly? Well, Foxy has always been one to attack based on attention. Clarify. In the first game, if you didn't look at him on the cameras enough, he would run to your office. In the second game, if you don't flash the light enough, he kills you. In the fourth game, if you don't pay enough attention to him in the closet, he kills you. Okay, did that make sense? But what does that, that have to do with him in the closet? Think about the second game. Where would Foxy be at? In the hallway. Correct. Now, where was the hallway on your screen? In the middle. And where does Foxy appear now? Oh, that makes sense, I suppose. Is it possibly just publisher preference? It's safe to assume that. How long does 5 a.m. last? This has actually felt like a real fully fleshed hour. It'll be over soon enough. Just don't keep track of time. Stick to your guns. That's what I'm doing. I'm just tired of being paranoid of Foxy, the peeping pirate. It's not that bad if you establish a sort of rhythm with the of the whole thing. I'm running back and forth so much I'm burning calories by the pound load. And just like that, the world's best security guard is back in action. You're a child, Don. Enough with the insults, Obama. You should be praising me. No, like you literally play as a child, not a security guard. Then I'm the world's best child. You can say that again. 
then I'm the world's best. It was a figure of speech, Donald. Two days until the party. What happens on the day of the party? Are we having a gender reveal for the demonic terrors that are stalking us? He hates you. Starting optimistic, I see. I don't blame him if he's acting like this. You really unironically hate a small child. Damn right I do. You have to get up. Or don't, and just stay there and die. That works too. Jeez, you are sad. You can get out this time, but you have to hurry. Well, let's get the hell out of here. What's little orphan Annie doing over here? Where's your plush toy? Mine is Spring Bonnie. You mean Spring Crap or Piss Trap? Yeah, no thanks, you little miscreant. I see why Ivanka has daddy issues. Well, you better watch out. I, I hear they come to life at night. Interesting. So that must mean that a lot of secrets about the restaurant got out to the public. Not enough secrets for the police to care. And if you die, they hide your body and never tell anyone. So when the hell does this game take place? And why does this little girl know so damn much? She has to be connected somehow. Yeah, especially after just dismissing it like this. Aren't you the kid who always hides under the table and cries? Yeah, Andrew Tate would be ashamed he's not on his Sigma grind set or whatever it's called. Something tells me you agree with Andrew Tate. His messages are good, but his marketing is terrible. Absolutely terrible. It's a mess. Have you seen his pictures? <laughs> it's like he poses for a Fortnite poster. Ah, ha, ha. No one else is scared. Of. Why are you? Stop being such a baby. Mean little thing, isn't he? They hated him for telling the truth. Are you going to the party? Everyone is going to the party. Uh, this party must be the talk of the town or something. If the town is like five people, then yeah. Oh, wait. You have to go. It's your birthday. Ha, ha. Why are you laughing that it's my party? What? Is this kid a vegetable or something? I wouldn't exactly argue against that. Listen, kid, nothing is stopping me from kicking you right in the shin and making you eat dirt. Do you not remember who you're playing as? Fair point. I'll whip him into shape. I'll take him under my wing and soon we'll be a money-making tandem. Yeah, not to love and support the child or anything, just use him for personal profits. You're telling me they can be used for other reasons? No, don't use them at all. Like, you know, a normal parent? He's hiding again. And you're telling me a normal parent doesn't do that? I'm not really shocked at this revelation. Just disappointed. You're crying again. You live with him. You should expect to be around this. I've never really seen hatred the way Donald hates this child. He's the definition of being pathetic. You would think this rough environment would toughen him up. At this rate, he won't live past his teenage years. Uh, yeah. So are we just jumping right in? No intro? We're picking up where we left off last time and you have plush trap to watch out for. Great, my favorite game. And now we wait. I heard him take like 15 footsteps. What the hell? Be quiet and listen. He's still not moving. Joe said to be quiet. I'm hearing him walk. You're not being patient enough. And now he's not even moving. You're going to run out of time. Oh, burn in hell, you throwaway novelty. That was embarrassing, Don. It does get more difficult as the nights go on. At least you tried. Well, that's no matter. The world's best security guard simply doesn't need two hours shaving off of his time. I'll beat this before Obama loses another chef. You just had to take it there, huh, Don? I'm out of the loop. What's going on? All I'm saying is that he was a good swimmer. I'm not saying anything else. But you know he was a damn good swimmer. Ah! Not 20 seconds in and karma already worked her charm. You make it really easy for Brock to make fun of you. She wasn't even breathing. I'm telling you, this game cheats. Hand me the keyboard, you blubbering baby. I have whistleblower files as your pacifier. Something that a lot of people want to know about is what each of your guys' favorite animatronic is. They already know what mine is. Anything comes to mind for you guys? Nope, not one. I actually hate every single one of them. Straight detestment. I think you just get upset when they kill you. Every single one of those games is rigged against the world's best security guard. They detect my potent power from the menu screen and have to make last second adjustments to minimize my effectiveness. You're not a Pokemon, Donald. They're not taking advantage of your weaknesses. Well, this game might be the exception. You're not slick, Chica. I can hear you. What the hell sort of magic the gathering sneak attack was she trying to do? Regardless, this game might be the exception. 
After all, you have to be quiet, and we all know who struggles with that. Shut the hell up, Leatherface. With the addition of the fourth game, this doesn't make this an easy selection. Well, if that isn't breathing, I don't know what is. I noticed, anyways, we have quite the variety of characters here to choose from. Which one sticks in your mind the most? It could be any feature about them that you like. They look the coolest, or you like their role in the story, or whatever the case may be. You still have to let me think about it. I can't just come up with a decision on the flip of a switch. Can I say the one I hate the most? Let me guess, Balloon Boy. Boy, yeah, you got it. Was it the sole fact that he would laugh when he took your batteries? I just hate his stupid face in the damn vent. You're telling me he's the size of a child, and I can't muster the strength to choke slam him against the desk? He's still a hunk of metal, Don. And he still deserves to get the mommy long legs treatment. If I ever saw Balloon Boy get crushed up into bath salts before my very eyes, I might climax on the spot. I think you just climaxed as we speak. Why do you do that? Why do you always have to make things gross and disgusting on... I didn't even hear anything. Good catch, Barack. I mean, there's probably little kids watching us. What if they say that around their parents? Of course, the one time Chica's here, Foxy runs the closet. No words, Don. You don't care about what the kids say to their parents? Then they should also tell their parents to do a better job raising them. I mean, they're clearly doing something wrong if they're watching us. Don't loop Barack and I in this. That's all your fault. We're getting way off topic. I think I have my answer. I, uh, uh, do you actually have a favorite, Don? You know what? Yeah. I think Golden Freddy is pretty cool. The way he just sits there all limp and relaxed is menacing. Whichever kid inhabits Golden Freddy must have been the toughest kid around. How the hell do you set yourself up every time? What are you talking about? Nothing, just forget it. Barack, what's your favorite character? Mine might have to be Freddy from all the games or Withered Bonnie. And there's Bonnie. Good catch. Withered Bonnie just looks amazing design-wise. Freddy not only looks great in all the games, but he commanded respect out of us in the first game. And she's there too. Welcome to my life. Freddy is typically a side character in the rest of the games, but he made us respect him in the first game. Ah! What's wrong? Does baby need his pacifier? I closed the damn door. Why the hell did I still die? You must not have closed it long enough. Well, I guess that leaves my turn. Here, I started the game for you, Joe. Anyways, what were you talking about earlier, Donald? Who did you say is your favorite animatronic? Yeah, I said Golden Freddy. You sure it's not another yellow animatronic? Perhaps a more shiny one? All I'm hearing you say is, punch me, Donald. Quiet down, you two. As a friendly reminder, my hearing is pretty shot. You guys need to be extra quiet while I play. We might as well be playing this game with Al Gore at this point. You know, I'm not one to share my thoughts on other politicians. That can always bring bad blood, especially around citizens of other countries. Right, but you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells because someone is going to take a bullet to the heart. Say whatever the hell you want. Yeah, that's certainly never gotten you in trouble before. I'll have you know that the trial is pending, not adjourned. Of that matter. I, I think it's in the best interest of the American people to remain neutral when discussing such sensitive matters. What about Justin Trudeau? You act like I would say negative things about the man. I endorsed him for his elections multiple times. His policies are prioritizing his people. All right, not too shabby. And he strives to understand fellowship with foreign leaders. He's an overall great human being to be around. That has to be professional levels of meat riding. Meat riding? I'll explain after Joe's done. I saw it on Twitter, it's where some friend- You really don't have to explain that. I think I already get the picture. I've not seen Obama suck up to his wife like that. 
let alone another man. I commend you for even finding the words to speak after serving up a deep throat. Your rude, crude, and socially unacceptable behaviors. Give me a second before you finish that thought. Okay, you're good. Do you have any words for the Canadian Prime Minister? Canada is on fire for a reason, you know. Yeah, because of heat and drought. Not because... Not because Justin Trudeau is in a thong lighting matches in the woods. I don't doubt the thong part. I don't either, but that, that's, that's not the point. Point is, he's not some wretched boogeyman the way you make him out to be. Some young adolescents in Canada would disagree. For bad hearing, you're doing pretty good, Joe. Thanks, Barack. I'm trying here. Got it on this side, too. All right, Donald. Name one bad thing about Justin. Him. Specifically, one bad thing about him. Okay, specifically him. Stop being a tool and be serious. From what I remember, you boasted about him being a very good friend. Oh, and you never lied to the press? Just answer the question. It's not that hard. Simple. His liberal agenda... So you don't actually have a real reason why you hate him? Well, that, but he's also Canadian. What about it? Well, he never, ever shuts the hell up about Canada. Ever. I hope you guys are having as much fun as I am. Like, can we just talk about something other than your maple syrup? Nice try, Chica. So why are you guys talking about maple syrup? Hold on, Joe. He's like a jukebox that can't play another song. Get over yourself. Before Don distracts you, Foxy ran in the closet. Yeah, I know. Are you guys talking about Justin Trudeau? Yeah, Donald's complaining about him. You know, that's fair. He didn't shut up about the Raptors when I was around him. Ha! In your face, Obama. At least you guys had more normal things that he talked about around you. And he's backed off for now. What did he talk to you about? His colonoscopy. I will say this, Joe, I think you did a fantastic job at picking what games we should play. It's rare to get a compliment from such a refined oaf stack. What's the occasion? As I was perusing through what the YouTube gaming shelf had to offer last night, I noticed something alarming, very alarming. And just what exactly did you happen upon, Donald? I spied with my little lie something that would blow you away like the big bad wolf. Get out of here, Chica, and stop gatekeeping, Donald. Let the flood alarms ring. I'm interested now. I noticed that there is a metric brick ton of Minecraft content. Way too much. They're like clone troopers, I swear. I mean, Minecraft content was on the table, but you do harbor valid criticism. Um, Minecraft videos have been in the spotlight for years now. And I knew that Covering the game would be rewarding at first, but it would just become highly saturated. That and you played horror games for the past decade. That too. Good call. I also would not have uh, had as much fun as I do now if it was the same game. Don't look now, but it's 5 a.m. Don't jinx me here. Anyways, beating the hell out of an oak tree with your fist is only so exhilarating. Well, not all of Minecraft is like that. There are online servers that'll exist in their own corporeal realm aside from the main game. Some even specialize in horror-themed adventures. Um, it can be a pretty open world if you let it be. It's just that most videos surrounding the game are predatory towards the people that consume it. Almost like fast food or sugary drinks. The more someone consumes it, the more it deteriorates a person's health. And the more it doesn't taste that good overall. I know damn well you're not looking at me right now, Joe. He's not, but I am. Let's go, Joe. The only thing that was sleeping was those damn animatronics. Now that's a win fit for a president. Huh, I guess an old dog can still perform some new tricks. Damn right. Now time to celebrate in style with another wretched mini game. One day until the party. We're almost there. Did he get sweeped in the closet or something? And why are you crying? Please let me out. It seems like someone has trapped him in there, Don. Possibly his brother or something. I'm thankful for his brother. You're just mean-spirited. Please, grow a pair of balls. It's not that hard. Get up and fight for what you believe in. What a shot! He calls in the fetal position and diarrhea's all over himself. Please, let me out. I hope you starve. By the way, take the keyboard, Donald. Why's that? 
I want to play a bit into night five before we end things off. We also have your favorite game to play. I don't know how tall this little munchkin is, but I want to body slam it into pieces. Are you serious? I just have to wait till the last second. Oh, I hate you. Trust me, Don, it won't matter. This night isn't like the other nights we've faced. What's so different about it? You'll notice almost immediately. Thanks for telling us everything we need to know. Good old reliable Joe over here. So is there anything that you notice different, Don? Actually, yeah, I'm hearing sounds I've never heard before. I don't know how to describe it, but it's really weird. Like footsteps? I think so. What the, the hell? Ah! What the hell just happened? I didn't even give him consent and I just got my chest impaled. That's gotta be some type of crime. Was that Golden Freddy? Is he a rare character? Is that why all the noises were different? Something you should note is that night five only has Golden Freddy. You don't have to worry about any other animatronics during the night. That's interesting. Why the hell does that happen? This damn child can't have a normal thought to save his life. What a weak person, just horrible. He'll grow up to be an abysmal person. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what though, the artistic appeal to that thing is terrific. It's incredible. The more that I think of it, the more I might actually like Golden Freddy, especially in this game. How the hell do you, man, this is gonna be fun. What does that mean? You'll see. Yep, Brock, you're up first. Let's put this golden teddy bear back in the claw machine. So what do we have to do to survive this night? If not obvious, this night is different from all of the others. The only enemy we have to worry about is Nightmare Fredbear. Wait, I thought it was Golden Freddy. I was just calling him that for namesake. Regardless, on this night, you have to flash the light no matter what. You don't listen to his breathing, but it's still important to use sound. When he's in the hallway, shut the door until he leaves. For both the hallways and the closets? For the closet and bed, he'll actually laugh when he teleports. Didn't know that piss bear was holstering a damn portal gun. The more you know. Oh, he's right there. Yep, now just wait for him to walk away and repeat the process. Any other damn encyclopedia book we should know about? For the closet, you have to keep the door closed until he moves. For the bed, you have to keep the light on until he leaves. Be careful. Sometimes his laughs are just decoys to get you to waste time at the closet. Got it. Is there anything else I need to know? That's about it. Good luck. This game keeps loading us with characters we're supposed to remember. Whoa, talk about peekaboo. He was making a static noise, too. Winnie the Pooh must have feasted on the mangle before this. I'm surprised, if anything, you haven't commented about merchandising. What is there to comment about? Their business model as a whole. Had a quick reaction to that one. If you think about it, it takes an old approach with a modern spin. What's the developer's name? Scott, you said? That's right. Scott seems talented, very much talented, and he's made himself good deals. Shut up for a second, Don. And there he is. Okay, I think you're good to talk now. He's transformed this picture-clicking game into seamless poetry. What the hell are you even talking about? All I said was merchandising and we somehow got to poetry. Art, Joe. We're talking about art because business is an art form. Even before we played the games, I've seen merchandise for FNAF pretty much everywhere. Any Anytime me and Donna would take the kids out somewhere, there would always be thrift stores or gift shops with little plushies. Oh! What the hell just happened? Seems like our talk of merchandise summoned a way bigger plushie. Damn, I was on my way to the door too. Hand me the keyboard, Barack. Let me see if I can throw down with that thing. All yours. But yeah, Scott's a genius. I mean, just look at how many games he's made. What's the exact count, Joe? I believe they're up to 13. The, they're 13. Wow. Unpack the whole One Piece series, why don't you? Just goes to show how massively successful it's gotten. And we're only on the fourth game. It seems Scott truly mastered his art form. It's almost something to admire at when you get down to the specific aspects. Also, why are you just sitting there, Joe? I'm listening to the footsteps around me. It makes it easier to pinpoint which side Fred bears on. Oh, I see, that's smart. 
it makes your moves more coordinated as the night progresses. That's if you can find Fred Bear. Where the hell is he? The, the whole point of this night is to have a final boss that we have to face. Like how FNAF 3 is structured. Yeah, but that doesn't exactly answer where he's lurking around. That's the whole point of the game. It's like a uh, hide and seek of sorts. Oh! And seek he did. Now you just got smacked down like a fly and leave me to carry the team once again. Have at it, world's best security guard. Global panic, ahoy. Let's get to work. I, I still really don't have a clue as to how this game correlates with the other games. You are mostly left in the dark for this game. It's hard to fit the pieces together. I think the main reason um, why I explained the other games is because we were skipping the phone calls. This game doesn't have that. Is this gummy bear bouncing from hall to hall? I can't tell where the hell he is. It's hard to locate him sometimes, but just keep doing what you're doing. I keep turning around and expecting him to be on the bed, but he's not. Like, show up already. You know, Joe, those phone calls are not the only thing missing. Right, we don't have a monitor, phone calls, or phone guy. Mm -hmm. However, this is the first game where we can physically move around, but it's also the first game where you can't really piece together what's happening until the very end. I know, it really doesn't give us a lead to what's going on, unless the party is where everything happens. The game does give you some information. Chances are that you might have just missed it. I guess it's possible. There are parts in this game that sync up with what I walked over in the lore. It even specifies the time we're playing it. Found him, and I keep the door closed, right? Yep, until he walks away. All right, and then we do this for half a school semester, and we're home free. Do you say it specifies the time we're playing in, like the year? Man, he just spun around the block like it was nothing. Yeah, the specific year is in there. While we were playing the mini game, Donald was talking too much to even notice it. I think the moment itself got cut out of the original video. Regardless, do you remember what the crying child does? after he ran away from the restaurant. He got scared by his brother in his room, right? He just loves this bait and switch that's going on. Right, he did get scared, but he actually did something before that. Yeah, but I don't remember that. That's all right, Don was too busy screaming at an infant. And I don't regret it. After the crying child ran home, he went and turned on the TV, and there we could see the show called Fred Bear and Friends. It even said the date on there. Can you remember the year that it said um, 1987? Close. The year was 1983. 1983, what significance does that have to the story? I'm glad I don't have to listen to breathing anymore. The last thing I needed in my life was the tenderness of George Bush's breath. Approach the newfound information with context clues. Wait a second, Joe, I heard walking. Okay, proceed. Well, 1987 is an important year. At least you found him, Donald. But some very specific events happened during that year. It was the year that the second game took place, right? Exactly. So take into account the events that have occurred up until then. Where would you slap 1983 amongst that timeline? I have no clue at what you guys are talking about, but I can feel Joe working up a hard on as we speak. I can say the same about your future cellmates after I put you in jail. Just so everybody knows, this is recorded a couple days before Donald's hearing, in case anyone is curious. He's on the bed, isn't he? Knew it! Get flashed, you obese pumpkin! But yeah, Don, Joe might have you in a checkmate. All until I show the whole world how hideously crooked the Biden administration is and walk away scot-free. Hello, this is Joe Biden, and I'm in the middle of editing this video. That comment that Donald just said aged pretty well, didn't it? Okay, back to the video. Geez, what the hell is that horrifying laugh? Anyways, what did you ask, Joe? Where I would put 1983 in comparison to the games? Yeah, like a timeline of sorts. Well, we know Fred Bear retired shortly after something occurred. However, we know the other animatronics exist because of the plushies in the kid's room and the nightmares that he was having about them. In regards to the killings, that's where it all becomes a gray area for me, but and if I had to take a guess, I would say around the time these animatronics were retired and the new ones were introduced. While you guys are talking about Star Trek over there, I'm ringing this bear around like a night at the laundromat. Yeah, you've gotten the farthest so far. Just don't let it get to your head. 
you know how fast things can change. The very best knows exactly what to do here, although Freddie Fudpucker likes trying to sneak up on me. Exhibit A. But yeah, Joe, that's where I'm marking this game. That's a good shot. I won't confirm or deny, but you've based your guess with a lot of details from the game. I definitely like how you're approaching it. This thing must be Nick A30 because he never backs down, never gives up. Nick A who? Oh, just some Fortnite streamer or something. I didn't know you played Fortnite. Let alone watched it. I never said I did either. I'm far too busy to get caught up in silly child games like that. Yet here you are. I just know him from what I've seen about him online. He's like a, a tumor to the meme community. Sort of like Fred Bears being a tumor to my flashlight battery. Be thankful that we don't have any battery we have to worry about for this game. You're telling me. Better yet, no Balloon Boy either. One more version of him and I might have blown a gasket. Well then. All I know is that you're almost to the end. Overall, this game has given us a lot less trouble than other games. Yeah, that's setting me up for success. Also, him and his creepy laugh. There you are, you pillow pet looking bear. You're doing a really good job of locating him. Which surprises me, you're not really the best at paying attention to your surroundings. Joe, you've fallen flat on your face more times than a damn pile of bricks at a construction site. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear that, though. Hell yeah, Donald. You dominated that. The world's best security guard always does. Now that I think of it, this game really didn't give us that much of a struggle. Wait until night six. Well, ready or not, it's party day. Can't wait to see the child cry a whole river. What the hell is going on? Wow, your brother is kind of a baby, isn't he? You can say that again. It's like watching a rodent run around in a circle. It's hilarious. Now this is what I like. These are my kind of people. Why don't we help him get a closer look? He will love it. Doubtful. No, please. Some big brother, huh? Come on, guys, let's give this little man a lift. He wants to get up close and personal. Ha <laughs> ha, and he'll be crying the whole way there. Oh, they actually picked him up and everything. No, I don't want to go. This is some desolate party I'm looking at. You heard the little man. He wants to get even closer. Ha ha ha. What the hell? Are they going to make him sniff his crotch? What are they doing to him? Hey, guys, I think the little man said he wants to give Fred Bear a big kiss. Something's off about all of this. My question is how the hell is he not able to squirm out of there? On three, one, two. Actually, though, what are they doing? What the what? hell? They put him in his jaw? What the actual hell? Oh! Was that the bite of 87? We literally talked about this game being in 1983, not five minutes ago. What the hell just happened? You saw it for yourself. The crying child was lifted up to Fredbear, and Fredbear's jaw crushed his head. I know that, but what does it all mean? Who have we been playing as this whole time? None of this makes any sense. Welcome to the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise. I have some thinking to do. Thank you, gentlemen. I'll talk to you later. Did he have toilet paper sticking out of his pants when he left? I think it's more abnormal that he has some thinking to do. When was the last time Donald thought? You might as well roll the outro, because we'll be here all day trying to remember that. It's showtime, boys. Are we ready for night six? As ready as I'll ever be. How about you, Don? Don? What? Oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, okay then. I'll take the lead for now and see where we can go. Routine as usual, Barack. Uh, don't let the fact that it's night six get in your head. For the first four hours, you have the regular animatronics, and for the last two hours, you have to deal with Fred Bear. Thanks for the heads up. The hardest part will definitely be the first four hours. After that, it's pretty much a repeat of night five. Hey, Don, do you think Barack has what it takes to beat this night? Huh? Oh, uh, I don't know. Ah, was just wanting your opinion on it. Okay. Yeah. Freddles are piling up as quick as ever. It's hard to keep track of them. They don't give you much leeway for tonight. It'll definitely be close, but great if you could pull it off. I'll try my best. I can't promise anything. Just stay focused on the sounds. Frettles are louder when they pile up. My light's flashing. I think I hear him breathing. 
I just don't know. Ah! What? I heard him walk away. Good try. Sometimes they don't go away immediately. I usually open the door when I hear the third footstep of them walking away. That's just a pain. I was doing well, too. Happens to the best of us. I'll get my turn out of the way. Let's hope that we don't have a repeat of FNAF 2. Right, Don? Don? What? Oh, yeah. All right, I'm done with this facade. What the hell is going on, Donald? Why are you moping around? Stay out of my business, Obama. No, you can't just waltz in here and act like a toddler. Grow the hell up. I said stay out of my damn business, you donkey. And what if I don't? Then I'll knock your teeth down your fucking throat. How about that? Guys, keep it civil. Then do it. Prove me right that you're the problem. You already proved you don't have any common decency to respect a literal toddler. It's not that. Then why do you hate a child that didn't even do anything to you? It shows overall hatred. Shut the hell up so I can explain. Okay, then. Go ahead and explain. Huh. I can't wait to see you tools mock this in press interviews. Just say it. He reminds me of myself. What? You heard right. He reminds me of me. How? You hate him. Why would you make that comparison? When I was young, very young, my father taught me the hard fact that there were two types of people in this world. Killers and losers. I think I remember seeing that in your autobiography. We had a very business-like relationship, no real emotion at all. As a small boy, I was emotionally neglected. As an adolescent, I was emotionally abused, made out to be a weakling by his own father. Sorry about that, Don. I didn't expect to hear any of this when I pressed you about it. It's life. Kids were raised like that. They were raised to be big, strong men. Emotions didn't matter. If I cried, I was weak. If I struggled, I was weak. If I didn't do anything else but win, I was a loser. And that's a problem we're still trying to fix nowadays. Men's mental health is seriously important. You know, people say that my father's instincts still show as an old man. It's hard not to after getting shipped off to military school at such a young age. That ruthlessness. Sheer cold ruthlessness that he always wanted me to have, even if I didn't want it. I guess seeing that child cry so much was nostalgia from a life I never lived. Like, I was my father, my own kin, disciplining me. Isn't that weird that you remembered all of that from a Flash game? And she's right there, but it amazes me how even the smallest games can cause such a big connection. Yeah, I guess it is weird. I haven't thought about that side of life for years. Decades, even. Donald, what do you define as success? What do you mean? Where does your purpose lie in all of your work? Is it to outwork what your father has done and feel superior? Or to prove to yourself that you weren't the weakling you were afraid of being? Being honest, I don't know. I really don't know. One more thing, Donald. What? What do you think takes the most strength to do? For what? Anything. Could be anything under the sun. Managing businesses, a lot of businesses like I do, take strength. That it does, but I think something takes more strength than that. And what may that be? Being weak. Come again? You heard me? Being weak. How does that even make sense? Think about it. As men, we've been told our whole lives to never be weak or vulnerable. And when we have, we trust in the wrong people that just end up hurting us. So it's almost impossible to open up to anyone. What's your point? Any man can lift a big weight and say how strong he is. But when a man can't lift his heart and admits he needs help, that's real strength, the strength to be weak. Huh. That's, yeah, that's something, all right. You've built a legacy that'll last forever, and you've completely outgrown the fears that were lurking in the corners of your mind. You'll be OK. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess you're right. You're the world's best security guard after all. Yeah, yeah, I am the world's best security guard. I'm glad respect was put on my name for once. No need to fear. The world's best security guard is here. That's more like it. Now sit back and watch Joe complete the game. If you guys didn't notice, we switched over to Nightmare Fredbear. As you can see, this means we're nearing the end of the night.
The hardest part seems to be the first four hours. This seems pretty easy since you don't have to listen for breathing. That mouth of his might need more than a mento. I wonder what those teeth actually smell like. Either piss, blood, or semen. And knowing deviant art, it's probably all three. I'm still left wondering how this all fits into place. It's a trick question. It doesn't fit into place. Every time I hear that laugh, it always sends a chill down my spine. Also, things will make sense soon. Just trust me. You are damn good at giving empty promises. Community Notes on Twitter is taking a massive dump on almost half of your tweets. Well, that's because my social media interns don't know history that wasn't taught on TikTok. Are they really that bad? I don't know who on my administration appointed them, but I wouldn't doubt if they couldn't even understand something as simple as this. And they say spanking is child abuse. What does that have to do with anything? Come on, Obama. You're telling me some hardcore discipline wouldn't set people like that to becoming better? I doubt spanking grown adults is going to result in any change. Well, I wasn't talking about adults, but that works too. There just needs to be discipline. Yeah, it's called jail. You should be very familiar with that. Ladies, calm down. We don't want Donald to go back to his emo phase. I should have just kept my mouth shut. Oh, it's already done. What the hell? Why was that so easy? That was incredibly anticlimactic. I mean, it was me who did all the work, but I will agree that was a lot easier than I anticipated. So does that mean we're finally done? Just wait. What the hell is happening now? What's going on? Just sit and watch. Can you hear me? Where are we? Like I said, just watch. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm sorry. You're broken. We are still your friends. They're all disappearing. Do you still believe that? I'm still here. I will put you back together. A flat line. Damn. Life is often taken for granted more than we even know. In the blink of an eye, everything can change. Yeah, truly everything. That upsets me. A life lived without peace. Horrible to think that it's a true reality for some. How do you think I feel? So what does this all mean, Joe? So much happened that I need a recap. So let's separate the gameplay with the mini games. The mini games all took place during the year 1983, as shown on the TV. This means that this specific incident was the bite of 83, not the bite of 87. How many damn bites does this place have? This whole establishment should get the czar bomb treatment. Now, if you couldn't tell when that bite occurred, the crying child indeed passed away due to injuries. Such a sad story, man. Now, regarding the actual gameplay, there's multiple theories regarding it. Uh, one prominent theory is that you play as the crying child himself, and every night you're stuck in a nightmare. That's why the time when you hit 6 a.m. is actually an alarm clock, and not the traditional church bells we're used to hearing. Obama, you were right about no peace. The more popular theory is that you play as the older brother of the crying child. This is supported by the fact that before the crying child dies, the text that says, I'm sorry, is different from when the Fred Bear plushie talks. This implies that this was the older brother talking to the child on his deathbed. And he has nightmares about being his little brother scared of these animatronics. Itachi himself would be impressed. Wow, so that's why the animatronics were in the house. And why the house layout is different than the one in the mini games. Puzzle pieces all starting to fit in. Can't wait for the Jenga tower to crash and burn once we get to the fifth game. We still have extra things to do for this game. Not only do I want you guys to see something special about Night 7, but there's also DLC that we can play with this game. Are you serious? We also have to fit this into the whole story too, Don. The crying child did not die for this. This game just never ends, does it? Don't act surprised. You already knew we were going to return. Besides, look at what the bottom of the screen says. Halloween edition. So we're playing in a whole new location? Start a new game up and you can see what I'm referring to. I just don't see it the same anymore. Perspective change can hit like a baseball bat. 
So why am I starting a new game, Joe? Uh, wait, don't tell me we have to do this game again. I assure you, we won't be going through the full game. However, you'll just be playing through the night per usual. So Nightmare Fredbear turns into Golden Freddy, right? Right, Golden Freddy is essentially the husk of Fredbear. Gotcha. I was just confused because the plush Fredbear told the kid that he would put him back together at... But what does that mean? That's probably one of the toughest questions throughout the series. There's no real answer that has been concluded. A bunch of speculation and theories, but nothing concrete. How so? In the first game, it was said that five kids went missing and were eventually killed. And there were only five animatronics in the game, so it was assumed one of those kids were Golden Freddy. However, this game almost implies that plush Fredbear allows the crying child to inhabit the Fredbear animatronic, essentially putting him back together. So it's really just a giant damn contradiction. Personally, I don't like the theory that Golden Freddy is the crying child. It begs the question as to why plush Fredbear was even sentient to begin with. If it's not one of the children's souls, then what is it? That's definitely saying something if you don't know. It's also a theory that Golden Freddy is actually a golden duo meaning that the animatronic is possessed by both the crying child and one of the purple guy's victims. It would also explain why plush Fredbear was able to talk, because it was the first murder victim. My head hurts. My head actually hurts. This is most definitely harder to understand than anything in college. I've comprehended straight out of Compton more than I have this story. It also calls into question the continuity of everything. It's important to grasp the basics as we proceed deeper into the rabbit hole. What would you define as a rabbit hole? Well, it's more like a sinkhole. We're gonna need a longer video, aren't we? Who the hell is that? It's just Bonnie. Him and Chica just have a nice, shiny redesign on their skin. They look like Halloween lights. That's basically all the DLC is. That and a couple of other things that I'll show later, but nothing major. So just trudge through this like normal. Got it. Wait, did Chica have a pumpkin? Yeah, nice little touch that they added onto for the Halloween effect. I feel like they could have made it more, I don't know, Halloweeny. What else are they supposed to do to make it more Halloweeny? Is that even a word? Maybe the atmosphere. Again, these were minimal changes added last minute. It's still a nice touch for a small game developer. And there goes night one. Do we really have to play the whole damn game again? No, we won't do that. I just wanted to play until the mini game. There's a, a little surprise for you. Please don't say that. This brother needs to get thrown in jail. The switch up is crazy. Fun with Balloon Boy? Surprise. So that's what else is different. They changed out Plush Trap with Balloon Boy. Get the trash compactor ready. How are you even uglier? I see your moral code hasn't been deterred with the Balloon Boy. If I'm gonna bully any child, it'll be this one. It's very interesting to see your hatred lock on to the different targets like a missile. Did he just crush his nuts or something? The hell was that? Seems like he's a fan of your humor, Don. Yeah, little Timmy Turner went to the dentist recently. I will say his tooth job is certainly on point. Hello. That line wasn't really distorted. It just sounded like he was in an Arby's drive through well, that Arby's drive through must be backed up because he's not moving a wink. And we lost. Go figure. It, it's not like it mattered if we're being honest. It's all right. Uh, we've pretty much spent all of our time here. Uh, go back to the menu and we'll continue from there. The fun just never ends, does it? Now click extras. If you set me up for another 1987 jump scare, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Ah, a bunch of bonus content, huh? Yeah, we can take a look at the models. So this was Freddy, huh? We never did get jump scared by him, did we? Yeah, obese Chica the Chicken was the problem this time. Her and Bonnie. It's ironic. In the first game, they were never really a problem, but in this game, they caused us all the problems. Also, does Freddy have a damn uterus in this game? He's literally spawning the Freddles from inside him. I think he just fueled Patreon art for the next week. I see they gave Bonnie the piss fetish for the DLC. It sort of reminds me of Springtrap. Why do you think I said piss fetish? Chica really doesn't look all that different besides the pumpkin. She looks like she's ready to lose a fight with Peter Griffin, but nothing out of the ordinary. Ah, uh, crap. Mangle? Where the hell does this thing pop up? Mangle takes the place of Foxy during night two, but I forgot about it, to be honest. It's built like a damn Apex pack from Apex Legends. And there's Fredbear. So just Freddy if he was roid raging. 
You know, I never noticed that he has a mouth on his stomach. The extra details typically get missed when you're locked in the game. It is a nice detail, though. Gives a more menacing aspect to Fredbear. Hey, Don, it's your favorite character. Imagine the carpet he would munch on with that pair of teeth. Although, Robot, that is still a kid, Don. If I can't body slam the crying child, I'll head Duke an old rust bucket. Uh, what's the question, Mark? This is the last thing that I want you to note here. There is one character that we have still not seen in this game. He's at the end of the seventh night. However, I really don't want to stay on this game any longer. I'll just show you him in a big reveal. What is this, a YouTube video? Yeah, just sit back and watch. What the actual hell was that? Did Freddy take a tar bath or something? That was nightmare. Not anything else, just nightmare. It's speculated that this reference is Shadow Freddy from the second game. Tell him that my dry cleaner does a bang up job. This is actually the normal version that you see in the game. This is the Halloween version, which is actually Nightmare Marionette. What a character design. It's like Kirby swallowed a fork. How does this thing keep getting uglier? What the hell? What's happening? This is the nightmare jump scare. No flashy animation to scare you, just an eerie stare and radio static. The mangle effect is sadly real, it seems. Um, is, is there anything else that we need to know? One more thing. After you complete all the nights, there's a box that pops up on the screen with the text. Perhaps some things are best left forgotten for now. Interesting. Any other cryptic messages we should be aware of? That's it, essentially. That's all of FNAF 4 in a nutshell. Well, there we go. On to the next thing, huh? Actually, we still have something to address. What's that? Well, the next part of the story is actually a graphic novel called The Silver Eyes. They're turning Freddy into Big Nate, aren't they? Possibly, but a tremendous amount of lore is revealed within the novel. So it definitely would be important to address it before we get into the fifth game. Yeah, 30 minutes of us reading off some damn panels and pretending to be exhilarated. Sounds like we're catering to our sleepy audience. Are you sleepy, Joe? How we go about it sounds pretty difficult. Would anyone actually be interested in watching that? We can leave that to the comments. Let us know if you want us to read the novel. Well, I don't know. Oh, you're talking to the audience. I guess that's all for now. Any last words for the game? If any of those animatronics had strep throat, we might not make it to see another damn cursed foxy or something. Boy, are you in for a surprise.